Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Sorin and in this episode I will show you how to build a simple fast charging power bank with only a few components. Four years ago I built this big capacity fast charging power bank, you can check the video here. It still works fine, but I have some issues with it. It's too big and heavy and I can't charge it with a simple USB charger. It needs its own personal charger. So I need a new fast charging power bank. This one is smaller, it has a USB Type-C input and we need only a few affordable components to build it. The main part is this USB boost converter with fast charging protocols. It has a low voltage input so it works with one or more lithium ion cells connected in parallel. To test it I will use my variable power supply set to 3.7 volts, similar to a lithium ion cell and my DIY USB voltammeter. The default output voltage is 5 volts. This is a fast charging trigger module. It's set to trigger 12 volts from the boost converter and I added a ceramic resistor as a load. I connected the modules with a short USB Type-C cable and after a few seconds the output of the converter goes to 11.9 volts and 1.13 amps. The average efficiency is 80%, that's nice. But what if the battery is discharged, will the converter still work correctly? The power supply will simulate a lithium ion cell fully charged to 4.2 volts. And now let's discharge the battery and monitor the output of the converter. The minimum input voltage of the converter is 2.8 volts. Below this value the output of the converter is starting to drop. When the battery is fully discharged to 2.5 volts, the boost converter turns off, nothing bad is happening to it. And if I increase the battery voltage, the fast charge converter turns back on at 12 volts with no problem. I need to point out that when the battery is discharged to 2.8 volts, the current consumption from the battery is higher than 6.3 amps. So you need to be careful, we are dealing with some high currents in this project. We need a module to charge the battery quickly. This one can charge it with maximum 2.8 amps. Let's test it by charging 4 lithium ion cells connected in parallel, because the current will be too high for a single cell. The battery voltage is 3.22 volts, I will use the USB port on my old power supply. The charging starts with 2.61 amps, that's pretty good. With 2.6 amps you'd think that the IC is very hot, I tested it after 1 hour with my precise thermometer and it's ok, it's just a bit hot, it doesn't burn. When the battery gets to 4.13 volts, the charging module reaches the peak current consumption of 2.28 amps from the charger, with an efficiency of 88%. That's pretty good. This charging module comes in two types, the 2.8 amps version without a heatsink on the IC and a second more powerful 3.6 amps version that needs a heatsink. I chose the 2.8 amps version because it creates less heat inside the power bank. After a while the battery charging current is starting to drop, now the charging process is in constant voltage mode. And when the current drops to 200 milliamps, the charging process is completed. This module has a charging process similar to the TP4056 IC. Only it has a peak current of 2.8 amps and the charging process is finished at 200 milliamps instead of 100 milliamps. But it's designed for bigger batteries, so that's good. The battery is next. I will use three of these HG2 lithium ion cells, but I need to test them first. So I will charge and discharge them with my Opus charger. And even though the nominal capacity is 3000 mAh, they have a real measured capacity of more than 3100 mAh. That's very good for their price. If you want to use the same cells, I added the purchase links in the video description. And I also tested these cells in an older video, you can click here to watch it. To make a 3P battery pack, I will use 0.12 by 8 mm nickel strips and my DIY spot welder. I will make a lot of welding points because the current draw from the battery will be pretty high. 
If you don't have a spot welder, you can get this type of cells with nickel strips already attached and you can solder them. The lithium ion cells need to be insulated with kept on tape. The 1S3P battery pack is finished, it has a capacity of 9.4 amp hours and can easily deliver more than 30 amps. It's pretty powerful, so for safety reasons I will add a 10 amps fuse on the positive terminal. I will solder the wires directly to the fuse, because I don't want any power losses from imperfect fuse holders. The fuse and all the soldering joints will be insulated with heat shrink tubes. The battery pack also needs a protection board, this one can handle 10 amps. Let's test the over discharge protection. The board is connected to a battery, I will add a simple light bulb as a load. The battery voltage is dropping and when it reaches 2.49 volts the protection board disconnects the load. The HG2 lithium ion cells can handle this low voltage because the cutoff voltage mentioned in the datasheet is 2.0 volts. But for a longer lifespan of the cells I recommend you don't fully discharge them. When the battery is getting low connect the charger, don't wait for the over discharge protection to kick in. I soldered the protection board after the fuse. Next we need a plastic case for the power bank. This is the smallest one that can fit all the components. I need safety goggles because I will modify it with my underpowered and useless rotary tool. First I will cut all the plastic standoffs because they don't match my components. This ball cutter will be used to make the surface smoother. I marked the cutouts for the USB ports and I will use my ball cutter again. And I will finish the job with a simple cutter. The front panel is finished, I made two more holes for the charging LEDs. The switch will be placed on the side of the power bank, it's the only available place. To mount the modules at first I wanted to use M3 standoffs, but they don't fit, the holes are too small. So I made some simple spacers from pieces of 4mm plywood. The modules will stick to the plywood with double sided tape. And I will also use two tiny screws to make sure the modules won't move if a hillbilly friend pushes the USB cables with extra force. The modules will be fixed in position with super glue for the same hillbilly reason. After 10 minutes the glue is dry and I can start soldering the rest of the components. Since there may be a high current consumption from the battery, in this project I will use thick wires of 2.5 square millimeters. That's also why I decided to use this ugly ass rocker switch, because it can handle a lot of amps and it has two poles, which I will connect in parallel to double the rated current and minimize the power losses. To solder these thick wires fast, I will use my ugly and powerful soldering gun. Let's turn it on for the first time. So far so good. The charging module is designed without a heatsink on the IC, but I will add one anyway because the module is mounted inside the closed enclosure. Actually I will add a second heatsink on the inductor, it will help with the overall cooling of the module. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, please check out my Patreon page. Let's check the charging module. I need a simple USB Type-C cable with minimum 2.5 amps. The red LED indicates that the battery is charging, but what you actually see it's not the LED. Earlier I added some transparent hot glue on the tiny LEDs and through the holes on the front panel. So the blob of transparent hot glue looks like a simple LED. The module doesn't get very hot, so it will not affect the hot glue. What about the fast charging boost converter? I wanted to add a heatsink on its IC also, but it doesn't fit. 
the integrated circuit is very small and it's surrounded by other components. There isn't any space for a heatsink on this board. But anyway, the board is designed without a heatsink and on the back of the board you can see a lot of via traces to transfer the heat from the IC, so the entire board becomes a heatsink. I checked the data sheet of the IC and it also has temperature protection, so don't worry about it. I want to add a simple 1S indicator for the battery pack. I marked it on the top cover and I will cut a simple rectangle. I will use two parts adhesive to mount it in position. These are the last two wires. You will find the wiring diagram in the video description, but it's actually pretty simple. On the solder joints I will add some hot glue, so the wires will be flexible and won't break. And I will also insulate the solder joints on the switch. Let's do some tests before closing the power bank case. First with the 12 volts trigger module. After a few minutes something started to smell really bad. The boost converter is fine. Oh, the ceramic resistor is burning. Everything is fine except my finger. What about the charging module? After half an hour I checked the heatsink and it's fine, it's just warm. So far it's ok, let's close it. The case came with no screws, so I will use 4 small wood screws. To charge the power bank I can use a simple USB Type-C charger with minimum 2.5 amps. The total charging time is 4 hours and 45 minutes and when the battery is full the blue LED turns on. Now let's do some real tests. First the 5 volts output with 2 amps. The voltage has decreased a bit but it's good enough. Next we have a Samsung S22. After a few seconds the voltage goes up to almost 9 volts and 1.53 amps and it takes a little over 1 hour to fully charge the phone. And the 12 volts trigger module which you've already seen. I already used the power bank a few times with different phones and it works fine. The boost converter does get a bit hot when working with 9 or 12 volts but it's nothing dangerous. Unlike its older brother this power bank is smaller, I can keep it in my pocket. What I don't like about it is this big and ugly switch, it ruins the overall design. But I haven't found a smaller switch that can handle minimum 10 amps. If you find one please leave a comment below and let's improve the design. So this is my simple and affordable fast charging power bank. It can charge my phone two and a half times, which is sufficient for traveling. Now I can retire my old and heavy power bank. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please share it and give it a thumbs up. Bye.